Welcome to Southgate Today. My name is Tannis and we would love to know where you're watching from. Drop a comment below and say hi. Each week we have Kidville content ready for you at 7 a.m. and a special Zoom call for your kids to join in at 9.20. Check out the details below. We would love to help get your kids connected here at Southgate. Big news, we are heading back to the Tackaberry lot for drive-in church on Sunday, June 6th. We would love to see you in your vehicles. Bring a lawn chair just in case you can sit outside. It is Sunday, June 6th at 10 a.m. You can RSVP below and find out all the details to get there this Sunday. We are going to have communion together, some activities for the kids, and just a great morning of gathering, worshiping together, and enjoying God's word. This past year has been challenging for so many and God has uniquely positioned the church to be able to extend a message of hope to those around us. And we are asking that you would join with us and partner with us through giving in our Inspire Big Give Sunday. See what God is asking you to give and be part of the mission here at Southgate for the coming year. The details to give are on the screen and uh, we appreciate your partnership. As we continue in our Build Back Better series, today we are looking at expectations, how holding those and evaluating those can help us, specifically in regards to our marriages. Now, uh, wherever you are, you can take something out of this and apply it in different relationships that you have. So we're gonna get started and let's take a minute and we'll pray together. God, we thank you for this day and that we can take time to worship and to look at your word. And um, we thank you that our expectations and our hopes can be found and grounded in you, God. We just pray that this teaching would resonate in our hearts and uh, that our worship would glorify and honor you today. In Jesus' name, amen.
So like I mentioned uh, other times, my family likes to go to Tennessee for vacation and one of the places that we love to go is Dollywood and uh, it's, it's a great spot. They got some coasters and great rides and great shows and so family likes to go there and uh, I remember a, a couple times ago that we went there, um, there, there was like this, this roller coaster we had never been on but it was like a choo-choo train and so uh, it, it looked like friendly and I was like, oh Bray, like my oldest son, why don't you come and hop on this train with me and we'll go it'll be a great introduction for you for uh, you know to try out roller coasters and so he's like yeah sure he, he comes he's a little nervous but I convince him you know it's gonna be totally fine and then we get on this thing and uh, little did I know this is kind of one of those roller coasters that uh, the magnets kind of propel it up the the climb and so it doesn't even have like a, it's, it's not climbing slowly to for the big hill it just like we get in there we get strapped in and this thing shoots off like a rocket and then it does like you couldn't see what was going on it was doing loops and and banks and turns and it was going so fast this roller coaster goes 85 miles an hour and so we get to the end of it like this whole time I'm looking at my son and he's like like doesn't know what to do he's he's kind of like scared about it right this is his first experience and then we get to the end and he's like looks at me he's like why did you trick me Dad? like why did you do that and I was like I actually I didn't know I didn't know it was just a crazy ride and he's like I never want to do a roller coaster ever again like you know, I don't want to do that again it's, it's terrifying right and, and and really I take that analogy of sometimes jumping into a relationship with another person and committing ourselves to one another and getting married and you throw in kids and finances and a pandemic for a year and homeschooling and not being able to do anything and yet you throw all that in there it is like a crazy roller coaster you were never expecting highs and lows and banks and and, and upside down loop-de-loops I mean all kinds of stuff what you thought was a choo-choo train ends up to be the craziest wild ride that you were never expecting. And yet in the midst of this, I really believe that consistency, consistency is the thing that it, it, people get, get maybe bored with consistency, like, oh, it's so predictable, so mundane, but consistency sets a good marriage apart. Consistency in work, consistency in working at this relationship and putting effort into it. it. It what sets a good marriage apart? It's it's so true. And so what is the number one reason that marriages kind of kind of you know drift apart or, or have, have difficult kind of situations and experiences? I really believe that it's it's like this disappointment and disappointment comes from unmet expectations. You, you come into marriage with an expectation. You, you, you get on that little choo-choo train with an expectation of what it's going to be, and you start going, and it's not what you maybe thought. It's a little bit different than what you were expecting. And I've heard it said that the number one reason for divorce has to do with money problems, but... I, I, my, that, that might be true in many cases, but I really believe that the number one reason that marriage fails is because of unmet expectations. In fact, marriage experts, they, they typically uh, agree that, that, that what breaks a marriage down is differing values about five main categories. How we manage our time, uh, our faith, and parenting, and money, and sex. This are, these are the, the, the tension points in a marriage relationship. These are the loop-de-loops. These are the things that kind of uh, lead into difficult conversations or maybe no conversations at all. And it's differing expectations and unmet expectations really are the silent killer of marriages. And don't be thinking that, you know what, I, I, I'll find someone else. I'll get remarried. There'll be someone else who, who doesn't have these crazy expectations. That, that, that there's someone else who is just absolutely perfect. And they won't have any expectations of me. The grass is greener on the other side. And, and really, it's not true. We are all human. We all have issues. We all have, have, have things that we deal with. We all have weird quirks and, and things that we like or don't like. And it's already been proven that remarriage 
it, it, it has more divorces than original marriages. Because the same problems are there no matter what relationship or marriage you're involved in. There's always tension. There's always unmet expectations. See, the answer in most cases is how to deal with these things. How to deal with your disappointment. And so today we're, we're going to be we're going to be talking about how to have a breakthrough in this, how to move forward, how to build something back better than ever before. And, and, and God has more for your marriage. And if you want more, if you're willing to chase down what God has for your marriage, if you're willing to pursue this consistently in your marriage, he, he, he really will lead you to an, a fulfilling and loving relationship but you're going to have to deal with these unmet expectations, these, these disappointments. And so we're in this series called Build Back Better. And this idea that, you know, God has better things for us. And in 2020, 2021, there might have been some things that we could say, you know what, this kind of broke in me. This broke in my life. And, and we're, we're talking about all kinds of issues, whether it's uh, friendships and relationships or the church or finances or marriage. And it's just been a real difficult struggle. And so our theme verse is from the book book of Jeremiah, and uh, we find it in uh, Jeremiah here, chapter 1, verse 10. It says this, See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy, to overthrow, to build, and to plant. And so highlighting kind of a, a difficult situation here. And as we continue on, as we learn more about Jeremiah, this, this prophet, and what's going on at the time, we see that God does something new. He, he, he breaks something down to build it back up. And we see this a little bit later on in chapter 33, 7 and 8. This is from the message. It says, I'll build everything back as good as new. I'll scrub them clean from the dirt they've done against me. I'll forgive everything they've done wrong. Forgive all of their rebellions. And so this idea that God can take something that is broken and build it back, even better than before, he can scrub it clean and uh, we can have better marriages than we ever thought possible. And so today we're going to take a look at uh, marriage in the Bible and, and really take a small look here at the marriage of Abraham and Sarah. Now this was a roller coaster of a marriage. A lot of things are going on, uh, bizarre kind of things. And uh, I mean, things like Sarah moving in with Pharaoh and and uh, Abraham pretending like, you know, she's his sister. And uh, later on, Sarah giving Hagar to, to have sex with Abraham for the surrogacy. I mean, it's all kinds of weird stuff that went on. And really what it boiled down to is that Abraham and Sarah had unmet and maybe untold expectations. And so today we're going to look at four, four things to help us with this. The disappointment of unmet expectations. And, and the first thing we really need to highlight is that we need to acknowledge these expectations. We all have them. We have expectations. And we have to acknowledge that our spouse has expectations as well. No one has lived a perfect life without expectations. There's expectations on mothers. There's expectations on fathers. There's expectations in the workplace, right? It's true in work. The number one reason that people leave their jobs is unmet expectations because employers have unmet expectations and employees have unmet expectations. We see this in, in the sports world, right? The owners of teams and coaches have expectations over their, their players. And players have expectations. I mean, you, you, can, you can get let go if you don't perform because there's an expectation that we pay you to do this, right? There, there's unmet expectations in professional sports. There's unmet expectations in, 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 in driving, right? That we're expecting people to follow the rules of the road. And yet there's been several times where I've been here in Kempville and see someone driving around the roundabout the wrong way, right? There's an expectation that you drive around it the right way. But, but people, there's all kinds of unmet expectations or expectations that we have in life. And you know what else we find has expectations? 
love. Love does. In fact, we see this highlighted in a very familiar verse. It's, it's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I read it in many, many weddings uh, that I've done. Normally people want this, this passage read. But here's what it says. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. It doesn't have a swelled head. It doesn't force itself on others. Isn't always me first. It, it doesn't fly off the handle. Doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Doesn't revel when others grovel. It takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. Puts up with anything. Trust God always. Always looks for the best never looks back, but keeps going to the end. He never gives up. I mean, amen to that. I mean, that's a great passage of expectations that love has. Love has expectations. But there's also expectations that, that God has. In fact, if we look in our Bible to Genesis chapter 17, drawing your attention right, right to verse 1, right, right, way, way back, we, we see this take place. In fact, before chapter 17, we see this relationship with Abraham and Sarah and the events unfolding with Hagar, right? Uh, Sarah's barren. She can't have a child. And so she tells Abraham to go and lie with, lay with, with, with her slave, right? Hagar. And so he does that. And, and, uh, but then a little bit later on in, in 17, the next chapter, we see God say something. It says this, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your number. And so God has an expectation here right away. And, and his expectation is walk blameless here. Live for me and I will give you that. I, I will give you many descendants, right? And God has expectations on us. He has expectations in marriage, and he has expectations over the marriage of Abraham and Sarah. We, we, we need to acknowledge it. There are expectations. But the second thing we really need to understand about unmet expectations is that we have to describe them. You need to describe your expectations. I am literally probably the worst at this, right? To getting the things that are in my head or things that I want to happen to get them out, right? And so this idea that you have to explain yourself to your spouse and an un unspoken expectation is a recipe for disappointment. It's a recipe for resentment. I, I, I can't know unless someone explains to me. And they can't know something that's frustrating or, or an expectation I have unless I share it with them. Instead of keeping it in ourselves or in our head. And if you're joining us here today, you might be saying, you know what? My whole marriage is one big unmet expectation. It's, it's terrible. And you, and you might be saying that. You might be thinking that here today. And, and maybe what you've done is you've thrown in the towel. Maybe that's what you've done. I have a towel here today, and maybe, maybe that's what you've done. And, and you know where that phrase comes from, right? Throwing in the towel. Like you, you throw in the towel, and, and it comes from this, 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 this kind of idea of a boxing match. And so you're, you're, you're in a boxing match, and, uh, and, you're, and you're fighting it out. You're trying to, to win this match, but each round, the, the bell dings, and the, the, each boxer goes to their corners, Right? And they sit down on a stool and they get all patched up and they, and they take this, this towel and they wipe the sweat off of them. And, it, and it's so that they're, they're getting ready for the next round in hopes that they win this match and, and they win this fight. But there's a certain time in there if they get super, uh, if, they're, if they're beaten down or, or maybe, maybe they can't think properly or they're getting dizzy or they're, they're losing the fight, then what will happen is that they will throw in the towel and say, I'm done. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I'm tired. I've fought long enough. I'm ready to give up. And it's interesting. I mean, I, I read that, that verse from, from Corinthians, and it's one thing that I, that I read a lot at weddings. And you know what 
You know what people often get at weddings? I mean, we are looking right now, um, a few weddings that we uh, get to go to this summer, and on the registry, almost always, you know what's on there? Towels. Towels. I, I, we still have some of those towels that we got. I mean, we've been married for, for over 15 years, and we have some of those towels still that we received when we got married. Emily even has towels with, with her, you know, her, her uh, a big E on it, right? It's sewn in there. And, and so we have these towels that we get when we're, we get married, when we, we have this commitment, this union of marriage and and at the same time, it can serve as a symbol of defeat when you throw the towel in. And the question is, what are, what are you doing with your wedding towel? What are you doing with that as you go through life in your relationship? You need to continually describe your expectations. You need to continually voice them. And in a loving way. And when you say, you know, how can't he know this? How can't she know this? It's not fair. It's not fair. There's no mind reading marriages that I've ever found. You have to voice what's going on in your heart and what's going on in your mind with the expectations that you have. Funny little clip here. And, uh, and a little twist. Uh, you know I love uh, seeing Tim Hawkins and some of his comedy stuff. And so I got, got a clip that kind of highlights some of these maybe expectations or unmet expectations in marriage. Let's check this out. Right? Wasn't that awesome? So, so good. I love watching his stuff. And you have to constantly describe your expectations here. Or, or, or you don't, it's a recipe, it's a disaster waiting to happen. You can't expect your spouse to understand. And like I said, I'm terrible at this. I am, I'm, I'm terrible at this. And, uh, <laughs> and I think Emily knows the things that are in my head and, and, and I didn't know that there was thermostat expectations until Emily was wrong. Right? I, I didn't know that there was thermostat expectations until she was wrong about it. And, and so, and so we, we've been married for 15 years and nine months, and we still have little, little quarrels about the thermostat. Because I think my expectation is that like, it has to be consistently like 18 degrees in our house. And, and, and I should be able to, to, to sleep with a couple fans on and my window open in the middle of the winter. And my, 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 my body is like an ice cube in the wintertime when I sleep. Like that's what I, I mean, that's my expectation. But, but it kind of leads to this next idea here about some of the expectations that we have and voicing them is that we need to investigate these things. <laughs> we need to investigate them. You see, after you acknowledge it, after you describe what's on your mind and your heart, then you need to investigate them. You both need to take a look at your expectation and decide, is this reasonable? Is this something that is worth sharing or arguing about? Is this something uh, that, that, we, that we really need to push through? Is it reasonable that my expectation is to sleep at nighttime in the winter with my window open and two fans blown? Is that reasonable expectation, right? And, and coming to an acknowledgement and understanding that maybe this isn't the best. Maybe it's a little bit unreasonable to ask for. And Abraham and Sarah, they were investigating their expectations that they were assuming about God. God told them that he was going to give them a son. God told them that. And the amazing thing is, is that she was 75 years old and she was barren. But, but he had told them, and so how long is a reasonable time to expect God to come through with his promise? Well, what's a reasonable amount of time to do this? How long does God have to fulfill his promises in your life? How many times do we quit following God because we had an expectation that he didn't fulfill? God never told them when they would have a child. He told them to assume 
that is going to happen to acknowledge this thing. It's going to happen. I told you it's going to happen. And so trust me. But most of the time we abandon those things because we find that, you know what, it's, 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 it's unreasonable. The timeline is unreasonable. I asked for this, my expectation was this, and it's still not happening. But in God's economy, it was totally reasonable. And so do you know, do you know what God thought was reasonable? Reasonable amount of time for him was 25 years. 25 years. That, that, that's what was reasonable for him. You know what was, uh, Sarah and Abraham, you know what they were thinking? They were thinking more like 10 years. 10 years was way too long for them. And sometimes when we have expectations that are unmet and don't fit into our timeline, we try to solve them ourselves. That's exactly what Abraham and Sarah did. And they, they, Sarah got her, her, her slave Hagar, her mistress Hagar, to come and to sleep with Abraham to bear the their, their, their son so that they could have a family, Ishmael, right? And there's repercussions of that. Repercussions that backfired on Ishmael, backfired on Sarah, backfired on Abraham, and really backfire still to this day. There are so many times when we think expectations are unreasonable, and then we, we go do something foolish to try to fulfill it ourselves. We go and do something that is unexpected, right? And, and, and we go do something to try to solve it. We go and try to fulfill that expectation, our itch, rather than investigating it together to see if it was reasonable or unreasonable. Which leads to receiving them. See, once you acknowledge that you have expectations, when you kind of describe these and verbalize them and get them outside so they can be talked about, once you do that, you eventually begin to investigate them. Is this real? Is this good? Is this unreasonable? And then together as a couple, you receive them. You receive these expectations. They're, they're the final things that, that you, you understand, you agree to. And Emily and I, we've been married 15 years, nine months. And it takes work. And, and, and to be married to me takes a lot of work, right? And so we, we, we kind of do this. And we've been together for 23 years after we've dated for eight years. Like we, we do know each other very well. And we had to have to move from my temperature expectations to our temperature expectations. We really need to, to move from this idea of the we is bigger than the me, right? This understanding that we have to do this together and agree to them together. And so if we take a look at those, those five things... These five things that, uh, that I highlighted right at the beginning, these, these five points of tension in a marriage is, is looking at these. Is, the, the first one here is, is the calendar. What are the expectations on your calendar? What are the unmet expectations? I mean, we don't do this perfectly, but one of the things I try to do is get home at the same time every day. That Emily knows when I'm going to get home. She can count on me for that. That, that there's an expectation that I let her know when I have to work at, in the evening or on a weekend or if there's a funeral or a wedding or something. There's an expectation there, right? And so to understand, what are those? Do, do, do the calendar together. Talk that through. Understand that, that, that there, are, there are expectations that we have for one another. Number two here is faith. Faith is a big one. And so what are the expectations in this? For, for Emily and I, it's to, to, to go to the house of worship, to go to church once a week, right? To make that community a part of our family. It is more important than hockey for our kids. It's more important than school for our kids in, in, in many ways. It's more important than any other extracurricular activities that we find that we have in our lives. This is the, the God is number one here. And so we have this in our mind, and there might be some expectations in your marriage about roles of each spouse, right? What are your expectations when it comes to faith? The next one is sex. What are the expectations in sex? Now, for Emily and I, it's none of your business, right? So you have to have those conversations, but 
But really, if we take this kind of attitude, this understanding of these expectations, it's, it's really ask for it less and give more, right? Whatever spouse is coming together with those expectations and serving one another. But this is the area that a lot of people, I mean, all these things, they, they, they try to sometimes meet their unmet expectations by doing something silly. And it might be having a, a, you know, a, a sexual affair. It might be having like an emotional affair. It might be looking at porn. It might be who knows what it is. But it's trying to fulfill some of these unmet expectations in our lives with foolish things that don't really play out very well ever, right? The fourth one here is parenting. What are the expectations that you have in your relationship about parenting if you have kids? I mean, if you have kids, what, what are they, right? Never, one of the things that Emily and I, we, we try to live out is like never correct each other in front of our kids. I never speak badly about Emily in front of our kids, well, to anyone, but, but we never correct each other in front of our kids. We, we got to be the same. We're on the same trajectory. I, see my, I want my kids to see me love my wife to hold hands with her or to, to kiss her in front of them, right? I, I want them to see that, that this is how you treat someone. This is how you treat a woman and your wife. So what are your, your parenting goals? Or, and, and how do you discipline them? How, how do you, how do you what, what's a priority for you, right? And then number five, money. Money is a, is a huge one. I mean, we, we have to get this understanding in our mind and in our marriage that you need to live within your budget. It's not someone else's budget. It's not how much money other people, we don't make the same amount of money, right? And so what do, how do we live within our budget? There, there, there's, in our relationship, there's no his and her money. We don't have separate bank accounts. We, we think it's better to kind of share this thing, that we can be transparent, we can be open, that we know kind of what's happening with our money, and that we save, right? We give to God first with 10%. We save 10%, and then we live on 80% of our income, right? That's kind of what we try to do. And uh, we, we've kind of agreed to those expectations in our life. You see, the endless expectation of having more and more money is unrealistic. It's, it's absolutely foolish, right? You can't have more and more money. There, there, there's never a never-ending supply. And so if we, if we, if we understand this kind of stuff, the, the, the expectations and acknowledging, describing, investigating, receiving them from each other, and highlighting some of these five points of expectations, write them down. Like write, write these things down. Actually physically make a list of some of these things that you have in your mind. See, the interesting thing here is that we, if we track with Jesus, I mean, going back to John 13 and, and this understanding that before Jesus was, was betrayed, before he was arrested, hey, there was this, the, the, the culture at the time is that a servant would, would wash the guests' feet when they came over for dinner. And, and Jesus, he was having a meal with his, with his disciples and none of them really, none of the disciples really wanted to wash feet because it was a job, it was a low job. Like it was the job of a, of a, of a servant or a slave, right? And yet Jesus, in the midst of this, their rabbi, their leader, the one they looked up to, you know what he did? He picked up the towel and he washed their feet. He picked up the towel as a servant and watched, washed all of their feet and he says, what you've seen me do, do to one another. Do to one another. Serve. Make that the, the priority in your marriage, in your relationship. Instead of throwing in the towel, let's pick it up to build back better marriages. And so let's jump into some practical application here. Well, what are some next steps that we can see? Number one, here's what I wrote down. Are there any unmet expectations that you've, that you've never voiced to your spouse? Some, something that's, that's kind of like brewing inside of you. You've swept it under the rug many, many times. You're, you're not bringing it up because you know it's a point of tension. And you just, you just say like, you know, I'm just going to deal with it. 
Is there something there? And have you prayed through that? Have you vetted it? Have you prayed through that thing, that, that expectation or the unmet expectation? Is it, is it reasonable, right? Number two, investigate your expectations to make sure that they're fair, that they're realistic. God, I have this brewing in my heart and, and, and I need some wisdom, some clarity. Is this realistic or is this foolish? What is this? Is this okay to bring up and pray for it for a few days, right? And then bring it up and, and talk about it. And maybe it is realistic, maybe it's not, but at least you have a conversation about it. Number three, write them down together and agree on them. It's a, it's, a, it's, a great, it's a great resource. It's a great uh, practice to do. So, so take your expectations, your unmet expectations or your expectations, write them all down. And you, you, you could use the five categories as a guide to the, to the expectations you have in each one of them. And then show each other and talk through those lists, right? And then finally, what, what is the uh, commitment we can make here? So, so you can write this down, make it something that you see as important. We'll, we'll share this for you if, you if you're not quick enough to catch it right now. But, but look at this and see if you can make this declaration, this, this commitment in your marriage relationship to build it back better than ever before. Here, here's what it says. I... Whatever your name is, I, Ben, will build back my marriage by serving God through serving my spouse. I commit to doing my part through acknowledging that I have expectations, praying through those expectations, describing my expectations, investigating those in, uh, expectations, and, and receiving my spouse's expectations on me and in our relationship so that I can build back my marriage to be better than ever before. Let me pray for you. Only Father, uh, um, we thank you for the gift of marriage. It's, it's symbolic of the union of, uh, of Jesus and the church and uh, this, this beautiful analogy of coming together as, as one, God. And, and yet it's hard to do that. It's hard to keep doing that. And so, Father, we ask for courage. We ask for compassion here. We ask for patience as we love each other well and as we try to serve each other like Jesus served his disciples. God, if go before us, strengthen the unity in our marriage and in our church, we pray that we could build back better than ever before. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I'm Pastor Kevin, and I just want to take some time to uh, look over the teaching and ask ourselves some questions uh, that will hopefully give us uh, some momentum to apply this teaching to our next week. And uh, one of the things that I, I want to ask you is, uh, and, and this teaching was on marriage, and, uh, but it, it, can be, it can be applied to all kinds of different relationships. And so what I want to ask you is this, what kind of expectations do you have on your relationships? And as a kind of follow-up question, what kind of expectations do you believe are put on you in your relationships? And uh, as we kind of look through this and, and, and assess how some of our relationships are going, um, we need to remember some of the things that we talked about. Just being able to acknowledge our uh, expectations and being able to describe them and then being able to investigate our expectations and lastly being able to receive expectations uh, becomes so important to how we develop our relationships. And I want to take this one step further and I want to challenge you to apply this in your relationship with God. Uh, what kind of expectations do you have in your relationship with God? Uh, what kind of expectations do you think God has on you? And I would encourage you that if you haven't taken the time to do this, that, that some of the expectations that God has on us is, is to begin to reflect the person, the character, and the values that Jesus taught and lived out. And so uh, as we go through this next week, I want to challenge you relationally uh, to look at some of these things 
and to begin to uh, reflect Jesus' character in all of your relationships, whether it be with your marriage or whether it be uh, with your family members or whether it be with your friends. Um, I pray that this is something that you can take and you can apply across the board. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I hope that this teaching has been a blessing to you and that it ultimately helps you become more and more like Jesus and that you are able to inspire life around you. Thanks again, and we hope to see you out next week. Thank you.